it's just i'm not even ready to talk about it to be honest yeah okay that's totally <laughs> no fine. it was just awful and keep moving until a door slams in your face and then you find <laughs> and then you go door. out the window i'm like but that's painful too yeah. this is death yeah. how in the world and like, look at this nice backpack i won and it was almost identical and so i told him i was like um i just got you one. <laughs> well okay i think i'll have enough time to do this what if i squeeze one more thing oh no never whatever. Like, I mean, if I don't have a solid hour, I'm not going to start anything. I used to run around my chicken house eight and a half times. And we're on. So, how, like, are you feeling like you're in the mood to record? Yes, or? I am. I'm so excited. I kind of feel nervous again, though. It's been so long. I know. I miss I, it. We did not intentionally mean to take a break. That's for sure. No, we didn't. I, I spent like two hours editing, trying to get a video yeah, workable so I could edit it. Wasn't working. It was like super low audio waves, so you could hardly hear. Well, Stuff you sent it to me. Up. Yeah. And I was like, this is not going to work. No, that was before I even edited. Then yeah. I spent a whole bunch of time trying to edit it. I edited it, sent it to you. And you're like, it's so quiet. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, yeah, it is. It's my end too. And we just couldn't doctor it up enough. Nope. And so we got a whole new audio setup, kind of. Josh did. Oh, I keep saying we. I didn't we, do anything. We meaning Josh. Yeah, he did a lot of research. So we're like trying to be producer and yacker at the same time. Yeah. So hopefully this works out. But yeah, this video is like a mystery. It has yet to be seen what we're going to call it. But <laughs> we don't know what, where it's going to go. Yeah, we should like catch up first. Seriously, I haven't seen you in forever. Well, I've just had the week from... We know where. I, yeah, you know where. <laughs> Last week was... Absolutely awful. Both my boys got the flu and it just like it went on forever. I thought they were better than they, you know, relapsed. They're finally better now. Jack's back in school. But, you know, when you get when you're used to getting a full night of sleep and then all of a sudden you're not again, it's just I'm not even ready to talk about it, to be honest. Yeah, OK. That's totally <laughs> no, fine. it was just awful. And like I was not mentally OK. Like it, I was it was awful. Well, maybe we but, can talk about that part because yeah. I get like anxious just hearing about sicknesses. Like I feel like I'm a sitting duck right now and I just I don't even want to think about it. So I mean, that's fine if we don't want to talk about sicknesses. That's yeah, great. I wasn't worried about them necessarily. I knew other kids had had it from Jack's class. I knew they were going to be okay. It was just middle of the night when you don't have any sleep and the coughing just won't stop. It kind of messes with your mind. Wow. And, and you can you can't do anything. Like everything I tried, nothing worked. I felt like a failure of a mother because I couldn't make my kids feel better. Yeah. It was wow. just, it was rough. But you know, it's normal. Like it's just normal things. It's not like a serious illness. Uh, I, yeah. But it's still, it's still hard to deal with in the moment. We're going to have to bring it up at some point that we're filming this actually before Christmas. So I have time to edit it and everything. Yeah. I'm just like, Christmas is this week. Please wait till after Christmas. Please, I know. Please, please. But I don't know. It's just going like raging around here right now. And I'm just like, Vani, we take our vitamins. We take our elderberry syrup. We get lots of sleep. We eat as healthy as we can. We wash our hands and then we just pray because. Right. If you're going to get it, there's not much you can do about it. There's a stomach bug going around too. And I'm like, can we just schedule that for Christmas vacation? Like after oh, all the holidays, I don't want it. I don't want to miss anything. But during that week when Jack has off of school, that would be an okay time. So <laughs> were you feeling down because like, cause I get anxious when my kids are sick. Was it that or was it the lack of sleep or what? What? It was all of it. Like my kids are old enough that I don't, like I knew they just had the flu. I wasn't worried that something was going to be wrong with them. It was more just like, I keep praying for them to get better and they're not getting better. Like, why isn't God answering any of my prayers? And then it brought up other prayers that I've prayed recently that weren't answered. And it just kind of brought up a lot of things that I thought I was over. I see. That I, I was see. not processed. And so it brought all of those feelings up and just feeling like, and you were not like a, a failure or like feeling like, you know, what even am I as a mom? And just... It was probably the worst time to process that. It, it was, yeah, time. just like yeah. doubting God and like if he even answers my prayers or if I pray something, if he's trying to do the opposite just to like, you know, maybe I shouldn't even pray. It yeah, was, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. And like not logical and things that I, like they're straight up lies. Yeah. But in the middle of the night, you oh, know, yeah. when you're trying you to believe and you it's hard to like, and I, I didn't handle it right. I didn't quote scripture to myself. I And I tried to pray anyway, but I did not have a good attitude. And yeah. Yeah. I almost felt like snarky or whatever. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm praying for this, but he's probably going to answer in the complete opposite way that I want. And it's just not a good feeling. It's, I don't like feeling like that. And it's something I obviously will continue to work on. I actually identify with that feeling, not like this week or anything. But yeah, I've felt that in the past. Too. Like, so like, are you at the point where you're like, I'm coming out of it. 
like physically with the kids. So now I need to start like, what was I learning through that? Yeah. And, like, processing it all later. And it's amazing what one good night of sleep can really do. I mean, did you, you ever feel just like if you even want something or start to think about something, God's just going to slap it right out of your hand. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway, that's a horrible thing to say because it's not true. You know, it's absolutely a lie. But yes, I feel like we are definitely on the men physically, emotionally, and obviously I s- s- will be working on spiritually. Yeah, as you say, that's <laughs> I mean, not that's always a constant as quick. process. <laughs> yeah, and it shouldn't be as quick, I don't think. But yeah, and a lot of the things looking back, and I was like, well, I was believing complete lies. But I know, but how do you like, you maybe don't believe them, but you feel them and you cannot not feel them. Like, that's right. the worst. Right. But yeah, a good night of sleep is just. It fixes a lot of the problems, honestly. <laughs> Did you miss a lot of stuff? Actually, we didn't miss a ton of stuff. We missed some of Eric's family thing this weekend. He had a weekend long family Christmas. Yeah, we've done some Christmas stuff already. Like, I thought it'd be kind of fun. We could talk about some of our favorite gifts, like either we're getting or giving. Um, I know this is like not exactly like this is January, guys, that you're watching this. But mm-hmm. I feel like it's fun to talk about this kind of thing. And you're always there's always gifts in your life you're looking for people for yeah. or whatever. For my friends... My one group of friends, I got them those pretty glass mugs. I talked about yeah, them, but on the like, episode that was trashed. Them, yeah, I them love again. them so much. They make me so happy when I drink my coffee out of them. They're just gorgeous. And they come with little gold spoons. So I think that was one of my favorite gifts to give to that give. I've given so far, for sure. Because you had it yourself and you knew Yes, how much I knew how did. much joy they brought me. Um, I'm also really excited about my mom's gift. It's like um indoor little herb grower thing it has a light on it and you plant your herbs in it oh like uh not a hydroponic but like a it's something like that okay yeah, yeah. an arrow arrow yeah, something it's called so i'm excited to see a show like that is that one of the hopefully it's one of those ones that you can just like dump a whole bunch of water in and go for a week yeah well she's I think always she'll exotic like, trips and stuff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she likes tinkering with stuff too and she likes her all her indoor house plans so I think she'll like it, but I don't really know how it works. So she'll have to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. yeah maybe you'll get some fruit of her labor. Too. Hopefully. <laughs> I often don't have ideas for Josh for Christmas, but when I think of something, I get excited about Like, I'm actually really excited to see what he thinks of. He has no, like, in between dress shoes and sneakers type of thing. So I bought him Nikes that I like. They have a black. They're like, I forget the the make and model of them. <laughs> Nikes, <laughs> Nikes are very specific. Yeah. Um, but it has like a, they're like low tennis shoes type of thing. Um, and I thought he could just wear them like Sunday evenings and like, like fashion sneakers yeah. basically. But they have like a white, sw- I'm sorry, they are white, like faux leather with a black swish and then a brown stripe around the bottom. So I figured they can go cool. with a lot of stuff. But I don't know. I'm re- I guess I'm most nervous about them because he's going to look at them and be like, ew, or love them. Yeah. Like, I Eric don't know loves which. shoes. I bought him a nice. Yeah, but would you buy him shoes? No. Yeah. I wouldn't buy them. Josh is not a shoe person, so I can buy him shoes, I feel, but I don't know what he's going to say. Yeah, no, I don't buy Eric's shoes. I bought him a backpack, a really nice golf backpack from Travis Matthews, like expensive, cool (laughs) brand name. And then a couple, a week or so after I bought it, he comes home from a golf tournament. It's like, look at this nice backpack I won. And it was almost identical. And so I told him, I was like, um, I just got you one. So he didn't return it. So I returned it and got oh, him a heated man. vest, which I think is kind of lame. But he's mentioned he wanted one and I didn't know what else to get him. But he wanted. That is so Eric. I know. <laughs> or he got a gift card and spend it on that or something. I don't know. But it was almost identical. So I was like, yeah, well, at least I was on the right track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, before we get into the meat of things, should we share recipes and everything? Oh, yeah. What are you wearing? It's so cute. Oh, I can't link that. Well, maybe I can. It's from Kohl's. Oh. I know. Random, right? But I'm guessing they're like fast fashion and they have it for like six weeks and then they don't. Yeah. I don't know. I just love sparkles and I saw it. I'm like, yep, need this. And my skirt is from Main Street Exchange. Oh, very nice. I'm trying to sit and like get a flattering it's so angle ag- elegant yeah i'm trying to have a flattering angle but i don't cross my legs because i'm terrified of varicose veins so i keep my word i don't them. i guess i don't worry about such things i feel like it's genetic and you're well, gonna get it or you're not yeah i thought i actually kind of thought so too but my mom was always like don't cross your legs like my you're gonna never get veins. Told me she always dealt with like spider veins and stuff i guess when she was pregnant yeah. i think it's my too late. my friend she's my age she habit. just came to me and she's like look at my legs she's like it's and it's only on the leg that i cross like she crosses her legs like this, and it's, it's all in this calf. Um, she's like, you always used to say that when we were teenagers. Don't cross your legs. Don't cross your legs. And now look at my legs. I don't leg. know if I can stop. But she's pregnant, so I have a feeling it'll go away. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, whatever. So I, it feels actually uncomfortable for me to cross my legs, but I feel like it's a more, I look more cozy I, It this feels way. uncomfortable not to. I don't know if I can stop. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking about habits later in this video. Yes. So. <laughs> 
um, yeah, this is just an inherent dress. Um, I say just. It's like a very bougie dress. I love it so much. Yeah, and every time I wear it, pretty. I get compliments and ask where it's from. So I can link them down below. I doubt they have this dress anymore. I'm sure it's sold out. It's called the Aurora, but you could look. Maybe it's still there in your size. I don't know. Um, but yeah, what recipe would you like to share in this video? All right. Well, since we're just through Christmas and I have my Christmas to look forward to yet, we always do with my family the seafood stew type thing. I forget what it's called. It's a traditional Italian dish, actually. Um, and traditionally, I guess, in Italy, they would throw like all their leftover seafood into this stew and it's kind of like a poor man's dish but to us it's like very <laughs> very special but we put tilapia and mussels which I don't like but shrimp and scallops but they kind of break apart sometimes so we don't always do scallops tilapia yeah all the different kinds of seafood that you can think of and then it has like I know it has lemon peel in it and peppers and onions and white wine I think is it a red sauce or like a white it's like a a white it's not really that cre it's not creamy it's brothy we put it over spaghetti and then we sprinkle freshly grated parmesan cheese over it we eat it with salad and it is divine and now there's two people in my family my husband and my sister who do not like seafood of course so we usually also have a chicken alfredo to go with it instead of the seafood if you're if you're feeling that so are you sharing this recipe like it's a recipe or you yeah just my mom got it no it's a recipe my mom Found it in a magazine, a really old magazine, but we've adapted it enough that I'm going to print it out and I will. Oh, gotcha. It's uh, like yeah, it's kind of version. like our own now. I mean, yeah. it, I think we kind of make enough changes that I can call it our own. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but it's a it's traditional Italian dish, too. I mean, you can probably just Google it. Has your mom been to Italy? I know your dad's been to Rome. Yeah, my mom has, too. Okay. I don't know about Rome, but yeah, she's been over there. Okay. Well, yeah. I wish I like, like salmon and tilapia i don't know about all the mussels and things like that i don't usually eat the mussels or clams i eat the shrimp and the fish and if there's scallops i'm kind of forgetting what else we put in there yeah i'll have to look it up we again. were host family at our church this past week and our it wasn't at church it was at our house but for dessert i made fried ice cream and it's my mom-in-law's recipe it's so good i will definitely put it down below um it's, yeah, you just add cinnamon to the ice cream and some Cool Whip and stuff and whip it all up and you do, do like a buttery cornflake crumb like top. But actually what I did to make it a little bit different was I did little individual cups so that I just feel like if you, I always have leftovers and then it's like, what do I do with this partially eaten dish of dessert? Right. So I got like the little individual cups from Walmart and like layered the cornflakes, ice cream cornflakes in each one. And then I put sprinkles on the kids and put the lid on top and just then everybody had like their own little individual dessert. So you don't actually bread the ice cream and deep fry it. No. It's more it's like, like a baked. casserole. It's like a okay. mock. Yeah. yeah you fry like a the dessert. cornflakes. Well, it sounds good. But yeah, I just thought it sounds random to share that in the winter. But if ice cream can be cozy, this is the yeah, recipe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it has the cinnamon in it and yeah. it's like the warm topping. But yeah. Anyway, and I like to sometimes serve it, drizzle it with like expensive honey if you have it around or whatever. Yeah, that sounds delicious. So yeah, that's easy. And yeah, a crowd favorite seems like anyway so do you like do did you do new year's resolutions this year are you going no to? <laughs> are, you me? are you making fun of me are you shaving me <laughs> no are you shaving me because i don't no like i just feel like you can't tell what a year is gonna hold you don't know and yeah. you make these resolutions and then i don't like the word resolution I have to or admit, goals but. or whatever and then the year brings something you weren't expecting and then you feel like a failure because you can't follow through you so we'll like just josh. skip that you sound like josh he's like i don't believe in goal setting he's like you just Keep moving until a door slams in your face and then you find <laughs> and another door. Then you go door. out the window. I'm like, but that's painful too. Yeah, I kind of but. agree. Like it's, and I think some people thrive on setting goals. I just. I'm way more productive if I do, I feel. But yeah, I, I guess know. it depends how you look at them because I do. It's true. Like if I, I guess I'm a little bit forgiving to myself because like if I do set a goal, I like I will not set a goal like a hard, like a hard lined. What are they? Smart goals. Like where you, they're measurable and everything. Right. Like I won't set a measurable goal. Unless I, like, I got to get it done. Yeah. Or it drives me nuts, you know, whatever. But then, like, if something would happen, like, you know, you get pregnant or not pregnant or, like, whatever, things like that can throw a wrench in yeah. stuff or, you know. Um, 
then I would just like acknowledge to myself, okay, that's not a goal anymore. I made that back at December 31st, you know, or whatever. So I guess it all is in your outlook, how you look at things. But for me, I feel like it's good to, I I always like to think about the things I didn't like from the past year and what I want to work on in the new year. Maybe working on stuff is better than just like a goal that you're going to get to. Yeah. Like more of like a thing, like things to keep in mind or things to work towards. So yeah, I would love to hear what your guys is like perspective is on that. If you just like pretend New Year's like January 1st isn't a thing or if you like, (laughs) you know, really embrace it. I love a fresh, it's so funny. Most of my friends do not make like, vision boards for the year or goal setting I have a whole video so I'm not going to go into all the top like the stuff I did for this year but I can link it down below I posted that a week ago but um my church friends were over and they all do they all have okay. for the year and they all have goals and so okay. I'm like oh okay so I'm not the only one in my pretty circles. sure my friends don't but I'm gonna be asking them <laughs> yeah, I no. don't think they do I did maybe. my one friend hope she had us together like a couple years ago and had us make vision boards and that was the first time I'd ever done it and it was super fun it was all before kids I would love to do that again but we yeah. don't have kids now so what are you gonna do um, it's not really a thing that's yeah. going to work. Us doing paper arts. Yeah, and probably not. Our kids are running, wreaking havoc everywhere. I liked what you said about like what you want to bring into the next year. I heard someone say that instead of making goals, she thinks about what she does not want to take into 2023 with her, like habits or something from 2022. That's just best, even relationships or whatever. That's oh. just best left in this year and then not carrying that on to 2023. So I don't know. I kind of liked that better than setting goals, things to like eliminate. I know, but so how do you like the things I'd want to eliminate? I feel like I don't have the power to do that. No, <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess you have to. Maybe you don't need anything eliminated. You are already like no, but I just feel like I would have. I would. I wouldn't have waited till the end of the year to eliminate them if I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. And same with a goal. You can set a goal anytime. Oh yeah, which I. Um, I'm a hardcore believer in like new month, like a happy new month instead of just always happy new year at the beginning of a month. I used to do this like one year. I think I did like a new goal every month. That's a little nuts. I don't do that anymore. But like sometimes I'll be like, oh, I kind of be into this or that. And I'll be like, okay, it's, you know, April 1st in a couple of days, I'm going to research and figure out what my goal is actually going to be, what I actually think I can achieve. And then April 1st, we're going to hit it hard. Like, I don't know. There's something about that number one. And like, I'll sometimes print out a calendar. Like if it's like a devotional plan, I want to try. Um, one time me and my friends were sitting at out on the porch talking and we're like, yeah, we don't have our devotions near as faithfully as we want to. And I'm like, you know what? I can't promise I'm going to have my devotions every morning for the next 300 days that are left in the year, but I can promise myself that I'm going to do it for the next 30 or whatever, you know? And so I printed out a little calendar yeah. and wrote in the chapter I was going to study, you know, and that was a very measurable goal. And I knew it was just to the end of the month. I was pacing myself and everything. And I gave myself a little bit more grace the next month, but I also like, instilled a habit in right me. it does um yeah. or like every I don't do this now that I heard this is a bad thing but every December I would uh, make a goal to be able to plank for five minutes solid by the beginning of the next year so like by December 31st that was the five I would work every day five seconds longer five seconds longer the whole month so that the 31st New Year's Eve I planked for five minutes and my goal was done already before the year had even started yeah that's but, definitely not a goal I'm going to be setting I don't recommend that actually it's not good if you're going to plank you should be planking for like 30 second bursts or like a minute maybe um because your form starts to slack and you start yeah. pulling on other muscles and it, you know I feel like I try to be careful with my diaphragm diaphragm and my abs and stuff with yeah. having kids and everything yeah. you can really destroy stuff if you're not careful yeah I don't make exercise goals specifically but my goal is always to consistently stay active and I for the last I don't know pretty much ever since I've had kids with maybe a year or two of failure I have done pretty good with consistently being active like every week getting four or five days of some activity like 30 minutes a day wow so, yeah we <laughs> but that means walking like that's nothing hardcore that's a brisk walk or walking in place in my living room for 10 minutes or whatever if I have to yeah well I I do this program called step bet my one friend got me hooked on it and you pay 40 dollars and then you have your step goals and you have to get a certain amount of steps every day like you have one rest day and if you don't then you lose your 40 dollars so 40 bucks i mean 40 bucks is 40 bucks and then it's not 10 bucks it's like right it's it's, it's a motivation it is a good motivator especially if you're gonna buy yourself something that you've been wanting with it right so that's actually i've done three it's a it's six weeks programs and i've done three of them so far like summer fall and winter so i've i've it's been really working for me so i think i'm gonna keep that up 
do they do breaks in between or is it yeah. just like back to back? It's six weeks. Well, the one that I think you can sign up for different games, but I the one I signed up for is six weeks on, two weeks off, I think, six weeks on. See, I think that's another key too. Like having that two week buffer break, like whatever, just to get excited again, to get yeah. back into something is sometimes like what you need. I mean, right. to go hardcore for 365 days on any one thing is pretty, pretty hard. Yes, I wasn't planning on talking about exercise now, but that's it's great. I feel like we both have totally changed our outlooks on movement since high school. Like, yeah, I remember we had to run a mile in 10th grade and I thought a mile was like an eternity. And I was just like, I barely this survived. Is, this is death. Yeah. How in the world? Who would ever want to run a mile? Like it is the most boring thing. And like your lungs hurt, your abs hurt, your legs hurt, you're itchy, you're sweaty, you're hot. And like, how is this any fun? But you had to like kind of work up to it if you weren't used to it. So I used to run around my chicken house eight and a half times was like a mile dad my dad figured out if you like yeah. I don't know I think it was a little longer than that technically because you have to like you don't run right on the edge of the oh, right, right you know whatever so I don't know but yeah I, I've come a long way over the years I think it was from all those sedentary years of teaching school I was like I gotta move after school I would just be like really angry. I still don't run so you're not gonna find you, me running what got you into it was it like pre- like post-pregnancy weight you're like I just gotta get rid of this or was it like you just didn't feel good or um, you mean a the friend? step bet specifically or no, exercise? No, just like when you, like, you did not worry about exercise at all in high school. I'm no. just wondering what era um, of your life did you start? I was motivated to exercise when I was pregnant with my son, my with Jack. I think even like starting, I had a miscarriage before him and I was like, so I had gained some weight, didn't lose it. And I was looking pretty flabby. Like I was gaining a lot of weight very quickly. And then I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes. Oh, So okay. that was a really big motivator for me. So to, then you were at least eating healthy because you had to yeah, for your baby. Yeah. So I was really motivated to do whatever I could to keep me and the baby healthy. So I would walk a lot. I did my elliptical a lot. And then I just, yeah, kind of kept that up over the years as much as I and could. you realize sweating is not as awful as you No, I did not realize that. <laughs> I realized that it is awful. It still is awful. I do. I like no part of it. But... You know, sometimes it's necessary and I like, I don't really get any satisfaction from being hot and sweaty. I do get satisfaction of being able to say, well, that's done for the day. Uh, And I don't do the elliptical anymore. I go for walks and that's still moving and getting some activity, but it's not hardcore sweaty unless it's in the middle of the summer. So I should probably do some more high intensity things. I've actually heard like mixed reviews on that. I think you mess up your like uh not your hormones your hormones maybe? maybe yeah my mom said always said like a brisk walk every day will do wonders and it really does it does something for your mental health too I don't know so that's that's what I do <laughs> yeah I used to be the hit girl like I would like run till I couldn't run then walk and then run till I couldn't run and then walk so yeah, mommy. yeah I don't do that as much anymore I'm not saying it's bad for everybody by the way I don't know I just heard some different things so I would research it um, if you are curious a little bit more. All right. I vote enough exercise talk. Yes, I think I was even planning. We weren't even planning to talk about that right now. I have a loose outline, but I was like, oh, sorry. Did I mess up that no, outline? No, no. I'm like, we can just record it. I knew you had it on there. We haven't got to talk like for a couple of weeks. It has been it's a long been time. Recording. It's kind of fun. Yes. <laughs> I'm loving it. Um, but we did promise we were going to keep up on our, inst- our, on our Honey, I'm Homemaker Instagram account. We kind of we did a little. a little bit. Well, life happened with the, the sicknesses. And yeah, stuff. I should have been. That would have been some real life moments. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. No, I don't think you should have to feel like you need to pull out your camera. I, I did think about real. it. Yeah, the different times. Like, what could I say or do? And I don't know. I just didn't think. You got to process for yourself first. Yeah. Some too. But yeah, I know. I see all these podcasts that they're like, oh, I'm just, they come in hot with their, you know, episode every week and blah 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 and then they just fall off the bandwagon i'm like we did not do that it was right. little technical difficulties <laughs> yeah. we had stuff coming in the mail josh did so much re- anyway, and we're so. back <laughs> yes and we are back and we think that yeah we're very intentional so yeah anyway just we're moving on with the series you yeah know? what else is on the outline um yeah so we before we get to our read and react section section where we're gonna like see what you guys have to say about your <laughs> previous <laughs> goals you set whether they were like winners or yeah you fell off the bandwagon but before that um I thought it might be helpful if people are getting into the new year, if there's any like, I hate to say hacks because there's not really hacks in mom life or homemaking really. I mean, there's some stuff, but it's overused. Yeah. The word hack is like, it makes it sound like it has to be real. Like you've never heard it before. And in this day and age, (laughs) how many things are out there like (laughs) that? It's all been said. Um, But yeah, is there anything that you've done? I know for me, like doing the laundry every day, like one load has been 
a hack for me that's like made me not hate laundry so much. I used to really, really hate it. But like, is there anything in your life that you've implemented that you've still stuck with over the years? Um, I do laundry when I need to do laundry. I don't hate laundry. And I don't know. I think my biggest hack or non-hack is to listen to an audiobook whenever you do something that's mindless or watch a show or whatever you can do while listening to something. Um, that's my biggest joy, I think, when yeah. I can have some entertainment while I fold the laundry or whatever. Today I was listening to this girl and her husband do a question and answer. <laughs> Oh, me. I was like, where is she going? <laughs> yeah, it was you. Anyway, uh, um, I just finished a really good audiobook too. So yeah, other than that, I feel like I don't really have that many hacks. And I don't know if it's because I only have two kids and now they're like almost full grown. So I don't really have to. I just do what I need to do. Um, I, I feel like I'm naturally pretty efficient. I don't really get sidetracked that much. I'm not ADHD I just see what needs to be done and do it so I don't know that's not really a hack like I feel like your hack is you have margin like you give your you don't pack you don't like well okay I think I'll have enough time to do this what if I squeeze one more thing oh no never like I mean if I don't have a solid hour I'm not gonna start anything (laughs) (laughs) and I end up wasting a lot of time that way like today I only had like I don't know, maybe 50 minutes. I don't know. But I... <laughs> Did you say 50? Yeah, 50. I kind of forget exactly. It was like 45 minutes. I'm, hmm, can I clean out my underwear drawer? Yes, I think I can. <laughs> oh, my word. It did not take you 45 minutes. No, it didn't. It took me like five minutes. But, yeah. you know, that's how I am. Like, I don't... I, I have like two or three, like, things that have to get done in a day's time. Usually. Yeah. You know, some days are obviously busier than others. And I do I do have a life. I do do things. Yeah, but I do, but like I said, I do feel I do. like you do I have, better with margin than I yeah, do. Yeah, I do. Like, I just don't have a lot that needs to be done. So that makes it a lot easier. I mean, yeah. Maybe you're just like a really good goal setter, even though you say you don't set any goals. It sounds like you're like, I you think actually I actually are realistic with yourself. Maybe. Like, yeah, I know what I have to get done that day. I don't write it down or anything, but I just know it. And then yeah. I usually get, get the stuff done with time to spare just to give you some like practical stuff that maybe you want to try if you haven't yet or just like look into it more i swear by am i allowed to swear my mother night (laughs) you affirm (laughs) i I definitely think that batch breakfasts are something you should look into do not be making your family breakfast every morning my goodness make it once for the week um and there's lots of recipes out there that work for that method um also teach your kids to do stuff so you're not doing it all it's so much easier to do it all yourself but if you once you teach it to them it does give back like you can have a couple things happening at once if you taught them correctly how to do it I mean of course there's always like shaping and things like if like can get sloppy over time or things like that but yeah like unloading the dishwasher or switching over laundry for me I taught them how to use the stick vacuum Mm -hmm. you know it's not that heavy just giving them some stuff to do Um, I already talked about the daily laundry. Also, my no fold kids clothes system is maybe a kind of shameful, but also kind of genius. Um, I just put all the kids clothes in like um, cubicles. So when I fold laundry, I don't fold it. I sit at the end of the hallway and I throw Ivani's stuff into her room, Fletcher's stuff into his room, Miller's stuff behind me and my stuff to the left. And then Josh has his own laundry load. I do at other times anyway so I'm just like throwing laundry and then they have to deal with it and they know exactly where to put everything and Ivani will hang her dresses on hangers but other than that it just all gets thrown in we don't we don't believe in folding I do fold the clothes which I really don't know why because the kids just throw them in their drawers anyway like it's it's pointless I don't point a to point b I guess yeah I don't know why you know what you could do your boys are bigger you could just get them each a little wash basket and say go get your laundry out of the dryer and they could poke around and find all their stuff that would work I put it in their bin and then they have to take it up and put it away oh that's another not mom non-hack I can't even say that that I was thinking about is I always if I need my kids to do something I always make sure I tell them if you want to have screen time these are the things that need to be done because that is such a good way to motivate them (laughs) otherwise they're not motivated at all yeah I feel like what's the bible verse saying about a father who like brings his child to wrath oh provokes provokes a child to wrath yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i feel like i remember this as a kid and my daughter is so much the same as me when your mom is like okay we have some chores to do go do this and you go do it and then she's like okay now go do this and they're just giving you one thing at a time yeah. it's like when is this gonna end and like ivani does that too she's like mom how many more things or like whatever so a list that they can see and yeah like, oh there is an end to this you know rather than just like one thing at a time yeah they- i 
that was how my brain thought as a kid. And so I want to do better with that with my kids. But don't you think your mom probably didn't know what she was going to have you do until you finished yeah. that thing? She was making it up yeah. as she went along. It takes some forethought to look around and see yeah. if it's going to happen. I know. That's true. Um, so should we read and react a little bit? Did you want to talk about Brighter Winter at all? Oh, yeah. Plug like that at all? I, I don't know if it's too late anymore. Well, no. It's Well, when is this going to go out? Probably the second week of January. Okay, well, it starts in January, so and it is February too, so, so they could up. at least do February. Um, Brighter Winter on Instagram. It is a, it's was started by the Daughters of Promise publication, but they do like this reading program. They have a calendar and they have different challenges. Um, it gets you reading different genres or different styles of books that you usually wouldn't read. Um, and there's giveaways that you can enter if you complete it. I did it last year and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just kind of a time of year where nothing else is going on. And one of my goals, well, not really a goal, but one of the things that I wanted to do was to read more last year. Um, I realized I really wasn't reading at all anymore. And it used to be one thing that I absolutely couldn't live without. So I, I mean, audiobooks work too. I count that, but yeah, it got me reading more, re- reading more widely, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it was motivating, too, to like, and you can, people post different things that they read then. And yeah, I loved it. So check it out. I will be doing it with you. I think you'll love it. And also, if you're looking for a good place to get audiobooks, check out the app Scribd. Scribed? I can link it down below and give you a code for two free months but it is the best i love it it's just so good i mean some people use the library ones what are they called Ho- uh, hoopla that i can't Libby. do that i don't have access to that my library does not do that um do they have a lot of options because mine is so i'm sorry to get political here but so left-winged agenda hoopla yeah what well, all goes by what your library every, has and like it's every great. library is different it's actually great in some ways because i've been wanting to look into feminism more because i want to like see what that's all about so I know how to like refute some of their arguments and things so there's a lot of books on there about that yeah but yeah like there's not a lot of like you know homesteader Christian mom lifestyle yeah. things whatever yeah I don't well know. script has like anything okay. I mean they have s- almost every book I think there was like one book I looked up that they didn't have but almost everything so they have extensive selection yes they do I mean then you pay for it so yeah, I mean you get what you pay for I guess I mean, if you have a, if Hoopla works for you, then don't pay for it, obviously. I used to love Hoopla, but then they changed it and I can't use it anymore. My library so dropped it. So do you um, keep the book or it's just like renting? No, it's right? just renting. Yeah. You, like I mean, you can listen service. to it as many times as you want, but it's not yours. You know, $13 you a month is probably less than the library fines I pay at the summer time. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. Oh my word, I'm so tired for that. Anyway, so let's see what some of our um, okay, listeners, yes. their goals have set. See if they've met them or not. The question I put out was, share with us a time where you set a goal that you stuck with for so long and you're so proud of yourself or a time where you set an absolutely unrealistic goal and or just like totally bombed. So I think it'd be fun to hear what you guys have to say. Okay. I did not look at these beforehand at all. So I'm just going to... I did not either. Someone said they set and completed a goal of running or walking one mile a day for six days a week for four weeks got so fast i bet you did good for you i wonder what month she did that though (laughs) probably not february (laughs) oh someone said i had a feeling i needed to be perfect so unattainable yeah Yeah. (laughs) do we all we don't none of us make the goal we'll be perfect yeah but we all have that in the back of our head yeah yeah but you know what we're supposed to try that i guess someone says become friends with more people in the church Friends can't be forced, so that wasn't a realistic goal. Oh, it's kind of true. Least tried. Someone says, "I'm going to work out every day," and then the smack your forehead emoji. <laughs> you gotta have a measurable yeah. start and stop. You just do. Someone says, "I love starting new habits, but I always start like ten at once, so naturally none stick." That's a good point. That's good. That's why you have to do that Happy New Month thing. Yeah, one a month. I read, listened to the whole Bible in a year, which felt huge to me. I did that too in 2020, and it felt so good. I did it in 2021 too, and then. This year I didn't do it and I think I'm going to do it again because it is the best way to keep me having that daily time in the word. I had so, never read through the Bible until I was 28 and it was 2021 yeah. and I... I was 29 when I did it and I don't know why it took me so long. It's embarrassing. Oh, here's a spicy one. <laughs> Saved myself for my husband and marriage seems common, but it seems like everyone around me didn't wait so i'm proud that i made it to my wedding day at 27 years old thanks oh, to goodness. jesus that's, that's me. awesome I like that's that. not everything but that is awesome like, yeah that's, a, that's really a really good goal good goal that's awesome 
Especially if you don't have that support system around you. Like, go, girl. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> They're not readable. <laughs> um, my husband and I set out to lose weight in April 2022, and we've lost a combined 121 pounds. My word. That's wonder, awesome. I wonder whose idea it was. I feel like I can never motivate my husband to do anything if he didn't want to do it first. Like, I don't mm. know. I did get Eric to read the Bible in a year. The year he after did. I did it, he did yeah, it. Yeah, but he also was reading like entire books at a time because he was like behind. <laughs> he got really behind, but he did it. I was proud of I him. Am. That's awesome. Someone said quitting nicotine and alcohol over five months clean going into the new year. That's awesome. In 2020, <laughs> I resolved to look at screens significantly less. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> that was a great ever. year for that one. <laughs> We're st- yeah exactly we can play on and god can laugh this type of that, exactly exactly giving up all refined sugar it lasted five months and was nearly impossible to do that does sound impossible you know what? i would say she met that goal for sure is that five months saying? i don't saying she gave up on it because i don't know months, it doesn't say Let's, she's trying to do it for a year i would still say i would be happy win. with wow. five months i bet when you go back to it again is you don't crave it as much probably oh, no. i'm not even gonna set that goal no. because i don't like to no, make goals and break them <laughs> someone said i practice a foreign language every day for three months to prep for a trip i learned so much wow that's incredible very worthwhile yeah i'm not gonna read the one about running half marathons oh, yeah we won't that's not um <laughs> oh having all our kids by 30 and then the sweating emoji so it looks like maybe that didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> a lot of reading the bible in a year yeah, that's something to be proud of, I feel. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we all have a su- a su- a su- a su- sustainable, su- su- successful. <laughs> successful. Yeah, successful year. Like, I mean, sometimes success looks different than we imagined, I guess. But yeah. yeah, I feel like rolling with the punches and stuff is also, you know, a goal we all should have as well. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I, I, th- I think when, what, what's the verse about where there is no vision, the people perish? I feel like a vision for i mean a, go- a godly vision godly goals and stuff and as long as you're not putting them as like gods above our family or things like that you know so we've been trying to share something that we take away or something we want to change going forward after we have these little talks because th- these talks are inspiring for me and megan too at least for me i learned a lot it gives me a lot to think about so this time since we are talking about goals and the new year and stuff i thought i would just share something that i want to focus on in 2023 yeah I feel like every year I say I want to pray more I want to pray more and I feel like I never quite accomplish that how I want to or as much as I want to so um someone on Instagram Jackie Hill Perry said that someone told her that if you want to pray more to match it up with something that you do every day so for instance every time you brush your teeth pray for your children So that is one thing, a very simple thing that I'm going to try to instill in my little brain in 2023. Every time I pick up my toothbrush, you know, the minute you brush your teeth, however long that takes to pray for my children. And maybe I will continue that while I do the rest of my getting ready, like get your mind praying and then it might continue longer, but minimum while I brush my teeth. So that is the simplest little goal that I have for this year, but I do think it's important. So Habit stacking works for yeah. lots of stuff. Very good. And if you want to know what I want to work on in the new year, you can go watch the video. I'll put it a link up here. I already have that one filmed and ready to go. So thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye.